This video is going to be actually really boring because I actually tested these burners and they're all pretty much perfect. Um, I'm still going to show you the process that I go through to get a nice consistent flame that lights reliably with the pilot. It always helps to have these burners if you could take them out to get them sandblasted. And what it does is when the sandblaster cleans it, all these little holes get perfectly clean. And that really helps because the size of the hole matters. If they're too big, you'll get a really goopy flame. If they're too small, they're going to shoot out too much and it's not going to give you a good like heat pattern. Let's just try this burner and, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Here, I'm going to shut this light off so maybe it's a little bit less. As you can see, it lit up almost immediately. I have my excellent blue cones. There's a little bit of goopiness going on the top. I tried to adjust it out, it's just not happening. I'm just gonna leave it. I think it's totally respectable. That's gonna be that. Like I said guys, this whole stove, everything just kind of worked out perfectly. So let me move to the other burner and you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the rear burner. As you can see, it lit instantly. I have my nice blue cones. This one's like a little extra goopy as far as getting these little flames going on over here and I blame that because there's a little bit of garbage still in the burner and it'll burn off after a little while it just takes a little bit of time unfortunately when I do get these sand blasted it makes it difficult for me to get the actual sand out of the inner tubes and he doesn't even sand blast so much inside the inner tubes now if I actually took those chrome covers off, he would sandblast it like that, it would be a significant improvement. But I didn't on this one, only because these were in pretty good shape, they were totally savable, and also this, the bolts always break. So I have to, you know, drill and tap them, and I have to pull the old broken screw out. It's just a pain in the butt, so I don't do that uh, typically on this stove, unless I'm doing a, you know, really thorough, kind of like a level 3 restoration or something to that effect. Let's look at the rest of the burners. So this is the front left. Oof. You know what, this could actually use an adjustment. So this one looks like it needs a little bit more air, but I do have the air up all the way, so I think I need to turn the gas down just a shade. I'm gonna make a small adjustment to this. I'm gonna turn the gas down just a, a hair and we'll see if that improves Well, that looks a lot better. So you're never gonna get them like, you know, super perfect because these older stoves don't have a gas regulator on them. So it's really difficult to kind of dial them in exactly. And then you also have to understand it's, you know, this is 1940s technology. They didn't exactly perfect these things uh, until kind of later on. This is the back burner. And this one's actually really good. I got my nice blue cones, it lights up very quickly, and we're in good shape. And I do want to show you guys what I did to the oven. So this, this oven, this particular oven did not have a standing pilot and I retrofitted the uh, old oven, the parts oven, which did have a standing pilot and a safety valve, but it had this old fashioned pilot slash thermocouple assembly which was no good. So I had to figure out how to get a pilot and a thermal couple, and I'll show you my solution to that, which I thought was pretty good. So as you could see, this was the old pilot tube, and it just kind of connected to that old thing that I just showed you. So what I did was I actually found a pilot assembly from an older stove that I kind of had, like a new old stock type of thing. And so I just plugged it in. I had to cut this pipe down just a little bit, like about a you know an inch or so. And then I just got a standard hot water tank thermal couple, and I attached it to where the thermal couple goes, and everything worked out pretty good. Nothing's in in the way. You know, I kind of wish this thermal couple was a little bit more elegant looking, but my goal is when I get these appliances going is to make them as serviceable as possible in the future. I don't want to put a fancy thermocouple in here. This is just a standard furnace or hot water tank thermocouple. It's a 24 inch one. 
They could buy it at any hardware store if it goes bad. It's 15 bucks. Only takes a minute to replace. Everything else is kind of a non no need to replace part. You know, that's that's kind of what my goal was and this actually does work out pretty well. I'll show you guys that the how the oven works. Let me get the pilot lit. I also had to attach an adjustment screw to regulate this pilot flame because the old setup was already metered for that specific pilot assembly that I already had and this one was obviously different. And I'll show you the solution that I had for that one too. Guys, this one was really complicated. This one really took kind of a minute. There was like a lot of complications that prevented me from being able to just kind of do it and be done with it. When I installed this thermocouple, the pilot flame was like four inches high and it was actually heating the entire oven, just the pilot flame. So I had to tone it down a little bit. I tried to meter it, but I couldn't. What I did was, so this is the exit for the pilot assembly. And what I did was I attached this brass adjustment, adjustment screw. And this screw, this little brass fitting with this adjusting screw is actually the same as that adjusting screw that runs the cooktop. Thankfully, because of that parts stove that I had, I was able to use that screw and at that point I was able to adjust the pilot to an appropriate height without actually having to butcher the system up a little bit. Everything worked out pretty good. I guess now that I'm looking at it, maybe I could afford to turn the air down just a tad. I think it's good enough that I don't really have to bother with it. I got my nice blue cones. I have very few yellow tips. Almost none of the flames are really jumping off, not for any meaningful amount of time. And then we're gonna heat the oven up to 300 degrees. Okay, so I let it sit for 15 minutes and as you can see, I got it set at 300 and we're just about 300. We're might maybe like 290. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. I'm gonna bump it up to 350 and see if it is still 15 degrees low at 350, then I'll make a small adjustment to it. But I'm pretty sure I tested this when I tested this yesterday. Uh, it was pretty much spot on. I think that there might be a slight discrepancy in the lower temperatures, but when I'm ca when I'm calibrating an oven, I always try and get my 350 and 400 degree temperatures spot on because those are mostly more popular uh, temperatures as far as when people are baking. You know, if you're roasting like a roast or something, it's okay if you set it at 450 and it ends up being 440 it's not that big of a deal, but when you're like baking cookies and you need 375, like you need it to be 375, it's it's gotta be a little bit more accurate than that. So that's why I base my temperature settings uh, based between 350 and 400. As long as 350 is spot on and 400 is spot on, then I'm pretty much okay if there's a slight discrepancy at the 300s or you know past 400. Let's let this sit and we'll see what happens. Okay, it's been uh, 10 more minutes. I'm at 350 and as you can see, it's just about spot on. This is one of those things that you just have to kind of, you know, live with with these older stoves is that they're mostly accurate at the temperatures that are important. You know, sometimes at the lower temperatures, you know, these thermostats are not electronically controlled. It's not super accurate. They are, but they're not. You just have to kind of deal with it. So I'm gonna do my last check, which is at 400 degrees. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to do just a little bit of electrical work to the body of the stove, which is not much. There's all the electrical stuff is basically in the head. The, I have to replace the power cord and then there's a little junction box in the back of the right cabinet that I just have to address and make sure that everything's okay. But other than that, we're in the home stretch. All right, it's been a few more minutes and I think I'm in good shape. So the big thermometer is reading a little bit high. The one on the right is reading spot on and the one on the left is just about spot on. 
I don't know if there's a discrepancy with my thermometers at this point if the oven is in fact a couple of degrees off. The one on the right seems to be kind of the more trustworthy one. That's the newest one of the bunch as well as the one on the far left. This middle one was one I found in a stove so I, I don't exactly trust that one 100%. I just wanted to have three in there so I could see which one is accurate. I'm going to call it good, guys. We're right at about 400 degrees, give or take a couple of degrees, so I'm definitely within the margin of error. I'm going to flip the stove around, and we're going to do a wee bit of electrical work, and then uh, hopefully we'll get started on the building of the head.